Buckle up. It's time to get bumpy on the podcast daily. It is Thursday morning. That's Anthony Schlegel, and I am Austin Ward. The Buckeyes are back after the off date, and Schlegs, uh, the Buckeyes have been pretty good when they have an extra week to prepare. What's the secret? Well, what, what, like, what? How are they really good, Austin? Like, what's the stat? Like, what does that, what does that actually mean? They've been really good, you know? Yeah. Off of week. Well, Ohio State tends to average about forty point victories when they have an extra week to prepare. Some okay, of these are good. a little bit wonky. Uh, you had an extra bye week in twenty nineteen. You had, uh, you know, the weirdness of twenty twenty with COVID. Yep. Yep. So they're not, they're not all the same, but it tends to be. And I don't think Ohio State in general has maybe lost an coming off the off date since 2005, but I don't know if you know anything about that. Damn. We, we lose to Penn state off that. Yeah. That's terrible. I still, I didn't mean game. to, I didn't mean to start the show that way. Like I don't, Freaking I don't want to be down or over there. Slap. I Jake. told you it was going to be bumpy. I, I didn't know that that was how bumpy it was going to get. So here's the thing. Um, one during bye weeks, you get healthy. Right, there's no reason for your best guys to just be smashing to each other, trying to prove toughness. Like that's built in the off season. And it's also done in camp. So that's that's not it. It's about getting healthy, but it's also about fundamentals and development of your other guys, right? So then, it's about let's go back and let's have self evaluation as to what works, what doesn't. Always remember this too: coaches don't get asked, "Hey, coach, that was a great call. Why'd you call it?" It's always, "Hey, coach, that was a call. Why'd you call it?" Right. And again, I also give Ohio State coaches the benefit of the doubt. And I know a lot of fans don't. That's because you don't freaking know. All right. But I, I don't come into your workplace and say, hey, man, your TPS report sucked. Why did, why was it so? It's a fact. So, anyways, during this time, there should be some self respect, self introspection, self reflection as to why you did what you did. Was, did the, did it not work because of scheme? Did it not work because I taught poorly? That's another critical aspect of coaching is teaching. Did I not communicate it properly with my players? Was it a lack of their execution? Was it the wrong call? Like Maybe we're thinking that we can do things that we can't. That's a realization. So then, therefore, then what do I need to do moving forward? All of that should take place in the bye week, and those should be really hard questions. Honestly, it's also a good opportunity as a coach to be like, does this drill that I actually spend four minutes of my allocated time which is really precious in the midst of a week because remember, in season training, volume is the killer to injury, soft tissue, especially. Though you have to get your work in, am I being diligent and intentional with the work that I'm doing? And if I'm doing the drill simply because I'm doing the drill, but the drill really doesn't have any type of application whatsoever to what I do in a game, eliminate it. Let's work on something else that we need to work on. So, those are all things that go into it about being able to be successful um, in coming off of a bye week. I would say this in 2005. All I know is Penn State 2005, one of the best environments that I played in. I absolutely loved it. I felt like the gladiator in the movie coming out of the bottom of the dungeon. They were shaking the fences. I looked over at Bob. I was like, this is the shit, man. Like, I am going to kill somebody. I mean, like, <laughs> it got me juice because it's just you and your boys. And let's not kid ourselves, 172 yards of total offense threw it out of them the entire second half when we get beat 17 to 10. We obviously didn't do enough self-introspection as to why we sucked on offense. When you had Troy Smith as your freaking quarterback, oh, side nugget, block the perimeter, freaking people knocking Troy on his face the entire game, like run a screen or a draw or something. Anyways, poof, David Copperfield, I digress. You, you, uh, you never forget the losses, do you, Schlegs? They stick with no, you No, man. I don't even remember wins, man. I mean, honestly, the only win I remember, dead serious, the, like, I remember 04 Michigan because it was at home and we were not supposed to win. Uh, and it was that freshman, right, that uh, the quarterback and the running back. Hart is the only guy I remember. The other guy, yeah. Henny, Henny, Henny. Anyways, um, we, we, we stuff, just stuffed him, man. He had like, he was all hyped up. He had like, he had like 11 yards rushing. Right. Uh, but 2005 Michigan game, I remember very vividly. Uh, I remember it because of Bobby being injured. I remember because James stepped in. I remember that defensively we played pretty well. I remember Troy leading us back at the end. Um, I remember that I had a pass interference call on that. I, I remember there. I had a couple of really good plays as well. I remember Gonzo's catch. I remember Pittman off to the left side. I remember 
freaking going into the locker room and drinking some crown with Eddie George. I remember sitting there and putting a freaking big Copenhagen dip in and just like chilling with my pads on, just like soaking up because I was mentally, physically, and emotionally exhausted from that game. And that I remember, I remember that win. I don't remember necessarily remember Notre Dame win or the bowl game win. Like I remember that win. Mm -hmm. And then I remember the Penn State and the Texas loss. That's right. what I remember, you know? So, anyways, I don't even know where you're going with that. <laughs> I, I it's never a know either. Thursday. It's a freaking it's, Thursday. That's right. It's a freaking getting... Thursday. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles coming to town. Fox Big New Kickoff. Palabunga. Mutant Mayhem. Um, Schlage, so the last win for Ohio State is still pretty fresh, but it seems to carry a lot of weight for this team right now. Now, we'll see. Emeka Ibuka, I thought, he gave one of the best answers of the off week. He's like, let me, let me hear you it. Know, he said, I'm I'm over Notre Dame. This was on Wednesday of last week. It was before practice. Like, it's important to move on quickly because the questions have been, well, what can this win propel Ohio State? What does it do for their confidence? And he's like, well, nothing if we don't continue to work and get better, which I thought was a great example of leadership. But he was like, let's stop talking about it. He was already thinking about Maryland in the off date. Of course. Which I think is important because, like, sometimes Bill Belichick gets, you know, a lot of, you know, his, I'm on to Cincinnati or whoever, those answers like, well, that's not very informative. But that mindset can also be pretty valuable if you are constantly looking ahead and then the next challenge, which it seems like Emeka Ibuka already was. It's, it's so funny that, I mean, again, I, I, I'm i listening to fans, but fans, you guys are all, you're all professionals in your own right. And let's say you go in there and you're a sales rep and you have this key account and all of a sudden they go with somebody else. Like, what are you going to do? You're going to sulk about it? No, you should evaluate why they, why you lost that. Is it a product? Is it a supply chain? Because I couldn't get my in there on time. Is it my delivery? Did I lose a relationship? Did I not give them a, enough attention? Right? But then there's also the ones that you win. And the ones that you win, you take that juice from the win, and then you go and you replicate it, and you're like, I'm going to go freaking attack. I got to go get better. Mm -hmm. It's the same damn thing, people. And so I just constantly, it, it blows my mind that we, we, a lot of people can't understand the perspective as to what you do in your everyday job is exactly what these people are trying to do in football. It's the same thing. That's why businesses look at sports and sports look at business. And I'm talking the elites of the elites. I'm not talking about people that want to be average and soft. I'm talking about people that want to be better, right? Because there's a process of that too. You have a choice every single day, whether or not you want to be average, good, or you want to be great. You control that. That's why I wore this. The one thing we're going to talk about later, when I want to see Max Effort all the time playing fast. Right, because I saw that in that game, regardless of execution or other things that happened in the game, I saw freaking max effort from dudes. Mm -hmm. All right, I saw mental, physical, and emotional toughness from everybody in the game, from coaches to players. Mm -hmm. So, so yes, he is absolutely spot on. The win is great. The win's a win. It's week freaking four. Right now, onto the Big Ten slate, and every week it's one step better than it was the week prior. And listen, offensive line, you got to keep taking steps, okay? Offensive play calling, you have to keep taking steps, all right? How you do that is on you, but you got to continue to get better every single week. You just don't want to see a digression, right? We're, let's not let's kid ourselves, man. There are some health issues on the team already, and right. it's week four because of the physicality that is football, which also goes into depth, which also goes into the development of that depth. Which also goes into, here's the one thing that people don't like to talk about. It. Everybody looks at stars, but stars don't mean shit if the kid can't do what you want them to do. And that's also on the kid. But it's also on you because you recruited the kid. And we forget about that too much. And we look at, well, why aren't you getting out of him? Why aren't you pulling all this out of him? Well, we got him. He's a five-star guy. It looks really good. But he might not be as physical as we need him to be. We thought he would develop into that. Which is mm -hmm. why I always look at, hey, man, if he bites as a pup, he'll bite as an adult, right? Like, I mean, that's the thing. When you're hunting right. pigs with dogs, I want him freaking baying up a pig at eight weeks old, just yapping in their face. He's got it. That dog's got the sh Wait till he gets to be two. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you want that, right? I'm going to develop all the other things. But then that's also part of coaching where it's like, why? Why is he not? Is he thinking too much? I see the capability. I see the flashes. So then I got to evaluate why not. 
these are all things, just so you guys all know, that transpire within a four-day window on any given week. Because right. you have the this is for sat this is speaking on Saturday now. So you play on Saturday, you have Sunday to, to be able to develop and, and work on some of these things. That means the player has to come in with the right mindset to be coached, and the coach has to come in with the right mindset and game plan to coach the kid. So you got that day. You got some off time. Remember, there's no time limit to being great. Dion talked about film study or something like that. That's a fact, man. You got 20 hours a week, but you have unlimited amount of time to be great. Okay, so are you studying film? Do you come in and have a meeting with your coach? He's open door policy, right? He's there to maximize your potential, right? Are you taking him up on that? Then you got Tuesday's hard physical practice. Then you got Wednesday, you're in, you're in shoulder pads and helmets. Then you got Thursday and you're in shells. Friday, walk through Saturday, let's go. That's it. So every single week, you're doing that reevaluation process on everybody on your entire roster. That's a lot, man. Like, I don't think people realize that, but you know what, though? Like, here's, I have a perspective that that's a lot in your business, too. And then yet you still got to go home and be a great husband, be a great wife, be a great mother, right? Be a great father, be a great brother, or whatever the case may be. Like, that's a lot of stuff that you got to go through. Right. So I just, I just want everybody to take that perspective. And I know I got on my soapbox, and I'm going to give you guys a little nugget about some shit. So here's the deal. Parents, I, I'm, I am the, I am a volunteer strength coach for varsity baseball here at my son's high school. And I'm also the associate assistant quality control O-line, D-line linebacker coach for junior high football. Okay. Parents, listen, perspective. Okay. Kids, perspective. My son's sixth grader. He had every opportunity to work out with me and train with me to work on body control, to get stronger. He's already going to be a big kid, significantly bigger than I ever have been or ever could be. God genetically gave him some things, okay? He didn't want to work at it. You can't go into a season and then expecting to play. The answer is this. I won't put you out there. I don't care if you are my kid. I don't give two craps because you did. You had all opportunity to work on your body, to work on your physical skills so you can control your body so that you can put yourself in a good situation. You chose not to. Now we're into the season and you want to get more reps. It's not about that. Reps are earned in the off season. Reps are earned every single day at practice during development period. So when we have an open field tackling drill that I obviously progress every single time, just letting you guys know, progression, I want guys taking an attack step. Then we go attack step to speed to power. Then we go to attack step on an angle. Okay. Then we're going to work on striking. Then we're going to work on tackling from the knees, tackling from standing, Tackling open field, that's very controlled area, giving them a one-way go. I to the thigh, boom, okay? All of those drills are opportunity to show the coach that you deserve playing time, just so you guys know. Playing time doesn't come on just, oh, he got reps with the ones or he got reps with the twos. Opportunities come during fundamental time. Opportunities come during scout period time. And if coach has got to go look for you or you go in there and get your kicked, guess what? It just shows that you're not ready, and I have a responsibility to not allow you to be hurt. Parents, oh, side nugget, too many parents out there want little Johnny to go in and get reps despite the team. I All I care about is that Johnny's experience is good, and he got a couple of reps in there. I can give two <laughs> about Johnny's reps, people. Just like I give two <laughs> about C.J. Hicks reps, people. If C.J. Hicks ain't ready, then he ain't freaking ready. But I want to see him get developed. I want to see them all get developed. Reps are earned. They're not given. So that's on coach and player. Just so side nugget, okay? So everybody, you need to take that perspective as opportunities happen three times a week. It's called practice. It's called fundamentals. And if, if your child cares and wants to continue to get better, go work it. See the progression. Because it's not necessarily what they do this year. It's about being able to come back the next year in the seventh grade year. He might just play a little bit. Then you're able to come back in the eighth grade year and he plays a lot. But you know what, though? He's more fundamentally sound. That's going to propel him into his high school's career. And guys, guess what? That's the exact same thing that's going on in college football. Just so you guys know. Just a heads up. All right? So anyways, Soapbox. Hope everybody enjoyed that rant. Schlegs, I think you want to play on Saturday. You are you are I do fired not. up. Yeah, you, I do you not. Do. No, I don't. No, because here's the thing. Here's the thing. I also have great awareness 
about myself. I'm 42 years old. Listen, there is no doubt that I am gas station ready. I have to talk. I have to ask the Lord to forgive me all the time because I, in my heart, I want to absolutely freaking smash some people. I do. I choose not to, but I want to. And, and that's a heart disposition thing, but I want to see, I just want to see coaches and players out there doing what they do. And I, and I can be honest with you. I see that at Ohio state. I do, man. I see it at Michigan. I see it at Notre Dame, Notre Dame. Again, Marcus, I played with the guy. Yeah. Marcus's team had a devastating loss at home. Came back one on the road versus a good Duke team. Right. Again, they beat, did they not beat Clemson? Did Duke beat Clemson? They beat, they beat them handily. They beat them by 21. Okay? Right. And they're three or four plays away from being in the top four. I'm just right. saying, right? Clemson is three or four plays away from being in the top four. Duke beat them handily. Okay. And Norton goes on the road and beats them where I think college game day was there for the first time. Yep. On a 95 play drive, 95 yard, 10 play drive. Yep. That's toughness. From one week to that, man, I see like when I evaluate all sports, I look at them, baseball, football, cheer, regardless, I don't care, man. Like that was the stuff that I, I personally look for. I'm looking at that, right? Yeah. I'm like, man, hat, boom. I see you, bro. You know, I see you coach, you know, take ownership, right? So, uh, those, so I do not want to play. I, I'm, I know I feel like I can't sometimes, but like, what am I going to do? Like, am I going to go to an old man freaking league and like try to get hurt? Right. Like, no, I want to, I want to shoot. I want to shoot gear and I want to coach my kids. I mean, literally my day yesterday, I wake up at five o'clock in the morning. I train high school kids from five forty-five to seven. I come home. I work out. I do my work. Then my son comes home. I take him to practice and we practice from seven to nine o'clock. I come home. I eat dinner again because I'm freaking starving. I take a shower, scrub my balls, and I go to bed. <laughs> Poof, David Copperfield, wake up, repeat. You know, I love it. It's good. It's a, yeah, it's wonderful. So I don't. So I don't want to play. <clears throat> Got it. Um, but the Buckeyes will play on Saturday yeah. at noon. Outside of max effort, toughness, assignment, alignment, attention to detail. <clears throat> yeah, bro. What 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 parts of the actual game outside of that do you want to see? I don't know schematically any, anything. Either Listen, side against yeah, Maryland. E easy money. I mean, the, the year that they uh, really hung with us, they ran the ball for 298. That was 18. Remember that was Haskin coming back for the 251. They ran it on us. Now, again, guys, listen, man, not all running the football is toughness. Okay. It's schematics as well. It's guys not being in the right position. That's all coaching, but it's also on the dude too now. Kebs, side nugget. All right. Um, so I'm not being an absolute to all the coaches. I'm just letting you guys know that there's fits and explosive plays that happen because of scheme. There's fit and explosive plays because of lack of execution. So that being said, the year they were close, they ran the ball. They run the ball basically one to two, right? They pass the ball two times more than they run the ball. All right. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing in this matchup is this, stop the run, get them in a third and long. They got two wide receivers, right? They got Jones and Felton. That's what they got, man. Last game where they have like 13 receptions out of his 24 receptions or some, what was he, man? Like, I, I, I don't even remember what he was last week. But 13 of the receptions, I think, of his 24, or more than half, were mm -hmm. to those two cats. Right? Yeah. And, then, yep. and then defensively, they got 13 sacks on the year. And I said this, so offensive line, how are they, and they forced eight interceptions. I believe Kyle has one. So we talked about this. Is Kyle elite right now? The answer is no, Kyle's not elite. I believe Kyle is the man, meaning he is the man at Ohio State. He is what they need need right now. He is the man there, the starting quarterback at the Ohio State University. So what does he have? He has elite running backs. He has a, a uh, an offensive line that is getting better. He's got Kate Stover, who I think is one of the top tight ends in the country, and he has an elite running back room. Your job is to distribute the football and not turn it over. That's your mm -hmm. job. Okay, coach's job, stop calling toss and, and, and stretch zone into the boundary. Run that shit to the field, right? And, and you're going to see some different route combinations coming up that you saw in Notre Dame, but they're going to start opening up some things, I believe, as we get moving forward, just to put some stuff on tape. But yep. so, so defensively, I'm excited to see our DBs, okay, on those cats, right? Yep. Um, that's one. Two, I'm excited to see how our offensive line handles the pressure 
because they're going to, their entire thing is this same thing as us. Get them to third and long, allow us to get sacks, allow us to force the, the interceptions because that's what they want. Like, I mean, like uh, Tungo Loa is the leading passer of all time in Maryland. Okay. And I believe he tra- didn't he not transfer there from Alabama? He's, he started at Alabama. Yep. Exactly. Right. So he transferred again. Love the portal. Okay. Good. Guys living out his dream, all time leader in Maryland. But like they're running back, they don't really necessarily run the football, but they throw it. So let's get into those situations. Let's make them one dimensional. And then for us offensively, secure the football. Do what you do, right? Handle the blitz packages. Do what you do. Don't turn the ball over and you win the game, I would say, by a significant margin. All right. Three difference makers, Schlegs. Hit me with them. Burke. Yep. Newsom and I don't know. <laughs> uh, and, and I'm, I'm going to say Kyle. Okay. Because because we need him. And here's why I say that. Penn State is very one-dimensional. Again, first-year quarterback, Alder, big kid, right? But they want to run the rock. If the entire thing versus Penn State, everybody, is make him, Alder, beat you. That's mm-hmm. going to be the – hey, it's going to be Michigan game. Make J.J. McCarthy beat you. Make the wide receivers try to get open on the secondary, right? But the only way you do that is if you get them in a third and six plus, yep. okay? Third, it's actually third and seven because there's third and short. There's three to, three to one, right? Then there's there's four to six, and there's seven plus, okay? And even that seven plus goes to seven, ten, and it's like 11 plus, right, mm-hmm. which really negates what you're trying to do. So all of those things go into it. The game plan is the game plan. But let's see how we can make teams one-dimensional in, in, through our resources. So right. stop the run. Remember, defensively, we're number one in the country, and I, I saw that stat from, oh, I believe it was college. Uh, where did it go? It was the uh, college football film room. Right, with only five sacks through four games, we're the number one opponent adjusted pressure rate, which means we're getting pressure on the quarterback. The ball's having to come out. We're just not getting the sacks. So they're there, they're close, but yet they're making an impact, is what the mm-hmm. is what that means. All right. So let's make Maryland one dimensional and let's see what Jones and Felton can do versus his secondary. Right. Let's see the secondary technique, which for the first four games has really been outstanding. Hats off, Walden and the boys. Okay. Yeah. Right. And a offensive line, maybe that's the one. Like you have a defense that has 13 sacks on the year that has forced eight interceptions. Okay. Let's see what you're going to do with Wheatland and Braid. Okay. Let's, let's just see what, how you're going to handle these things. Because if I'm a team looking at Ohio State, I want to, I want to 100% beat up Kyle McCord. I want to beat him up. I want to hit him as many times as I can because the only way that you're going to beat him is if you get a turnover or two and you Mm -hmm. don't turn it over. And then you capitalize on that with touchdowns. And let's go back to this last year. Ohio State defense in the red zone was like 110th in the country. We have to continue. Like You get a short field. We got to hold them to field goals. And I, I would think, again, look at the points from this year. I think it was like 3, 10, 3, and 14. I don't remember. Okay. I, I can't even forget. I remember what I did yesterday. Um, <laughs> but like 30, the number 34 points in four games. Pretty good. Freaking, freaking pretty good, man. So <clears throat> let's continue that trend. But in that red zone, field goals. And I think as college football has navigated, guys. To, there are more points that scored back when I played. It was 13 points or less. I would say it's probably 16. Yeah. You know, I, 16 points or less. Like it's got to be bumped up a little bit. But with that would be red zone efficiency, right? The Notre Dame game, you were 50 percent on third down defense. That needs to be better. That needs to be 30 to 35 percent, right? Something mm-hmm. like this, yeah. something, something to that effect. So right. the again. Hey, great win. You guys are playing at a high level, but there's always room for improvement. So that's kind of the difference for me. I gave you a lot there. Just digest that. Make sure that you hydrate, bend your knees. Okay. And 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 that'll be that'll be nice as well. Love it. All right. Uh crammed a lot into uh Thursday morning episode of the podcast Daily Lush Lake. Listen, I that's love what he's here for. I love cramming it in there, Austin. All right. I, clearly, there's no there's 
There's a lot of evidence that you can do it at a high level, Schlegs. Mm. The highest. That's right. Kudos to you for that. Yeah, appreciate that, it, bro. That feels like a good way to end it. He's Anthony yep. Schlegel. This is the podcast daily for Thursday. I'm Austin Ward. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you later.